Exclamation, everybody, and uh, welcome back to Cube Ramblings. Uh, for me, it is uh, Sunday morning, July the 5th, 2015. It is uh, Independence Day weekend for us here in the States. I hope everyone's been having a, a happy and safe holiday. I've spent the majority of the day um, visiting family. So, uh, I, I, as you can imagine, am kind of wiped out. Uh, I'm actually, st I'm actually starting this recording, uh, just, well, it's actually just turned one, one in the morning here, uh, for me. So, um, I can't guarantee that this is going to be a very long, this might be a, a much shorter, uh, episode of Q ramblings than what I normally put out, even though I have about an hour and 20 minutes of footage recorded. I don't know if I'm going to last an hour and 20 minutes, to be honest with you. <laughs> As I said, it's been a long day, and it's about 1 a.m. here, just past 1 a.m. here, uh, as I've started recording. But I, I've been looking over, trolling over all the stuff, and, and just trying to make sure I'm, I've got a mix of both old news and uh, new news, as, as always. And, uh, I, you know, I'm going to have a few things to discuss uh, and then, uh, I may end up just cutting it if I, if I end up, uh, <laughs> running out of gas here. Um, but yeah, well, in Cube World, we're, we're close to the hundredth episode of, of me recording things in Cube World. This is actually the 99th episode. Uh, we're at like level 259 right now. We, we do, I think, level up a few times in this video. Uh, crazy pants, all kinds of things. I get, I'm still getting good loot. I'm still running into, into enemies and bosses that I can't defeat because <laughs> I suck. Uh, and, uh, so many other things. And I, I've, you know, on the verge, constantly on the verge of breaking the game because, uh, my, I've leveled up the, uh, my horse, uh, sprint F. Uh, so much that he runs way too fast sometimes for the game to keep up and and I have to wait for I have loading screens and stuff uh, and uh, even you know with the hang glider and the boat and all that stuff <laughs> I've got them almost to level 100 uh, so <laughs> it's uh, I, I I'm still you know what I'm still really much enjoying this game um, it's a uh, I'm starting to see, it's starting to get long in a tooth as far as the world gen goes. Like, I've pretty much, every so often, it'll throw like a little, uh, a nice little valley or something at me as far as the world gen goes. But for the most part, it's, you know, those moments are getting longer. The time period between those moments is getting longer and longer between each. Um, so I feel like I may have seen all the world gen that I can see, uh, as far as the, as far as the game is concerned. I am curious. I have been walking relatively straight, but I do walk in these long circles. <laughs> I tend to, I tend to just circle around a lot. Uh, the, the large map, if I could get a large map, I would show it, but the large map tends to be just, uh, you know, a radius around my starting area. I haven't been like just going off in one direction and just keep on going. Um, I've, I've been tempted to do that. I, I'm tempted to just go off in one direction and just see how far I can go if it actually is an infant world or if I do end up either hint, hitting uh, some kind of barrier or end up just breaking the game by hitting like some area that's crazy pants. Um, but I don't know. I, I kind of, I'm going more for the exploration than I am, you know, the let's just see how far we can go and try to break the game type of thing. Um, that said, when I started up this session of the game, I took a look at the distance that it, it calculates in game how much uh, distance or how much land mass you have actually explored. And it said something to the effect of 20,900 and something square kilometers that I have I have traveled in the game. Over its uh, two years since it's been released, it'll be, I think, a full two years uh, in the middle of July, middle of this month. Uh, so, uh, still haven't had any updates, unfortunately, and still haven't heard anything yet. So, hopefully, we'll hear something 
before the two year anniversary. Uh, who knows? <laughs> who knows at this point? Uh, but I'm still really enjoying the game, and I'm uh, like I like I said before, and like I say in in the in the description of this. My uh, I like this game enough that I want to play it all the time. Um, and I originally developed this Cube Ramblings podcast thingy so that I'd have an excuse to play the game. Uh, it does wane on me a bit. Uh, I'll be completely honest. I'm not that I'm not the type of person that can play a game for forever. <laughs> um, I, I watch a lot of like speed runners and stuff. I don't know them by name, but I, I, I I've watched quite a few speed runs and to see those um, guys and gals running these games and run and, and do it and practicing and the amount of hours and years that they've put into just constantly rerunning these games over and over and over again to get the fastest best time. I, you know, bless their hearts because I could not play a game that much. Uh, I don't think even even Cube World at that point, I, I don't think I could play that much that I would I would be able to to sustain a, a, a speed run, you know, be able to practice the same thing over and over again that that often. Um, but I, you know, my hat is is off to them uh, and kudos to that because that is that is incredible. I mean, I, I feel I, I guess a lot of this has come up in my brain because uh, Minecon is going on uh, this weekend in London, I believe. Um, and I have some news around that that has been announced around Minecon, around Minecraft and all that stuff. Um, but, you know, I was thinking to myself, you know, it would be nice if I got back into Minecraft, but every time I feel like I want to sit down and do something in Minecraft, I just... I, I, I can't come up with any ideas. I, I, I get like, I'm in this state of, of just complete writer's block, if you will, um, or some, some similar creator's block, whatever you want to call it, uh, as far as, as Minecraft is concerned. There's there's projects that I had ongoing that I wanted to do, but every time I sit down and be like, okay, let me just play for a couple hours and, and see if I can if I can do this, I just, I, I'm like, you know what? No, nah, let's go play this other thing. <laughs> Right. It's just, and as I've, I've mentioned this many times in the past, I have this on again, off again thing with Minecraft and I always have had it ever since the alpha. I've always had it on again, off again. Like I remember in the early alpha, I, you know, I picked up the game right around when they, uh, um, it was still on alpha. It was just before beta. I remember that because they were changing the pricing structure of it. So I wanted to get in before the, the price change. I think I bought it for like, 10 bucks maybe um because i think that's what it was in the alpha and then it went up to like 20 dollars or something like that I, I, and i might be remembering that wrong but it was it did go up for the beta i think um and there was also there was a, a thought that they never actually did that the beta if you bought the beta uh you would not what, what was it you would get the released version but then you would have to pay for updates and they never did that but i think that's what it was and and the other thing was uh if you had bought an alpha you would always get updates for free that's what they were saying at the time uh mojang ever never actually ended up doing that because it turned out when 20 million people play your game you, you don't really need to take any more money out of them <laughs> Out of their pockets. <laughs> uh, they found other ways, like, oh, here's a console version, here's the Android version, here's this version, all, all that stuff. So, uh, so I remember scrambling uh, to buy the alpha version before it went before it went into beta, just so that I would make sure that I would always have free updates for it. Um, but even in the alpha days, you know, I, I played for three, four months straight. And then I got tired of it and I, and I, you know, didn't pick it up again until it was well into beta. And then I, you know, played some more here and there off and on. And then really, you know, I just kept coming back to it every so often, you know, when I was just feeling like I wanted to do something, but, um, never really, you know, 
it would it would be maybe a, a few weeks at a time and then I would get tired of it again and then walk away from it and come back again after a month or two and do that. Um, and that's very much the state that I feel like I'm in right now where it's like, you know what? Um, there's a 1.9 update that's supposed to come out sometime and it's supposed to have all this new combat stuff and dual wielding and uh, shields and they had quivers at one point in time, but it sounds like they've taken the quivers back out again and so on and so forth. This big, you know, combat update, which sounds like it would bring people back at least for a little while. But I, just, I I'm at that point, I'm at that point where it just feels like it's kind of long in the tooth. You know what I mean? Like everything, there hasn't been, if I guess if I compare Minecraft to Cube World, right? And, and there was a thread actually recently on Reddit that was kind of discussing this a little bit, not the comparison, but you know, kind of discussing the things that Minecraft really needs to do to to reinvigorate the co community. Um, and I largely agree with that. And that is, if Minecraft took a page out of Cube World's book and said, "Hey, you know, we've got all this procedural generation," and by the way, the procedural generation in Minecraft is actually slightly better than the stuff that I've seen in Cube World. Although there are some vistas in Cube World that are quite beautiful um, that I've taken screenshots of along the way. Um, there are, it, it does get a bit plain, even more plain than say Minecraft does nowadays, you know, with the terrain generation. Um, the old Minecraft, the, the, the beta Minecraft, before 1.7, before the adventure update, that world generation was always really interesting because you could go, you didn't have to go very far to find something that was really crazy interesting. Um, now it's like you can kind of tell when things are, oh, look, here's something different. And it's like, yeah, i kind of seen the same variation on that theme a thousand times at that point. Um, but uh, if Mojang had gone through and said, you know what, we're going to have uh, procedurally generated castles and keeps and other things just like in cube world here where these are procedurally generated and they all look a little bit different they get plopped into some some different area you got different bosses to fight and something like that um, that to me would bring me back to Minecraft for quite some time I would think um, and they're, they're getting there a little bit with the combat, but I feel like they need the combat, plus they need the the um, the, the world gen. They need, they need more world gen stuff. They need more procedurally generated stuff. They need to figure out what the hell they're going to do with the end, because the end is, is one of those things where you think to yourself, hey, I, you know, yeah, I've done everything that Minecraft has to offer, and people ask, well, when was your last end, end fight? And you're like, well... That's right, I really never did go fight the Ender Dragon, did I? Because there was really no reason to do it. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, I have I have worlds that are sitting around that still have an Ender Dragon in them because I've just never bothered to go there. It's like, why Why would I? It's the, it's the most boring battle you could ever dream up, right? It's like, let me just stand here and shoot arrows at this thing that just kind of does its own thing for 20, 30 minutes at a time, right? It's just, it's, it's really not, it's really not that interesting. It, it, the same thing is true with the wither, right? I mean, the only reason why I would ever sit down and fight the wither is so that I could get the beacon because the beacons are, the beacons help with all the grindiness, right? You can set up a beacon and then you don't have, you know, you're not mining uh, you're going through mines a lot faster and, and everything else. Uh, but just to get the wither is just the, the grindiest mess uh, that I have ever seen, right? It's just like, oh yeah, just sit here in, in, in a nether fortress, uh, taking out, um, you know, uh, the wither skeletons and hope that you get a drop of a, of a, of a skull. And it's like, well... Or, you know, grind out a bunch of books and then you can get, you know, a, a better looting sword. And then you have a slightly better chance of getting, uh, you know, the, the wither skulls dropping. But then, uh, you know, good luck. It's You still have to sit there for a while and do it. I, hell, I, in the, um, 
in the the what was it the the one map that I was doing uh, with the expanding world border. Uh, I forget I forget the name of it now. But uh, in that map, in the Nether, there was a Wither spawner, right? And I literally sat there at the Wither spawner, right, killing Withers for over two hours, just to get two. Well, I got I got six. I ended up getting six uh, Wither skulls, right? So I could do two Withers and get the beacons from them, right? Literally, that took me two hours to do that, and that was with a spawner. That wasn't the natural gen that you gotta deal with in in, in a normal in a normal world. So it's like, man, that was and that was boring as hell, <laughs> very boring. Um, that's another series I never actually finished up. Um, although I had because I was trying to actually make a beacon in it, and I have enough resources to make a beacon. And I actually in a test world I. What I did was, I, in a test world, I took that world, I copied it, and I made, and I turned cheats on and stuff, and made a test world out of it, and I just wanted to see if they had put beacon mechanics in there, because I didn't want to grind out all the materials for a beacon, and then find out that, oh, you don't actually get the achievement for the beacon, it doesn't actually move the world border. Um, it turns out, when I did that, I did that in a test world, it doesn't, in fact, track that achievement at all, so I would have wasted a whole bunch of time <laughs> trying to get all the resources together for a beacon and, and then not have it do what I wanted it to do. And there were still chests that they had in the world that were outside of um, the world border that you, the world border would not expand far enough to get to them. You know, it was just, I'm like, well, that's not really, <laughs> that's not really helping anything. That's kind of, that's kind of boring at that point. Um, but anywho, that's a, uh, Neither here nor there. That, in general, that's kind of what how I felt about Minecraft, um, and that's why I've kind of stopped all the series that I was doing in Minecraft. I'm like, you know what? It's fun to jump into from time to time, but I'm not really, I'm not doing anything compelling. I'm not doing anything interesting. So nothing that warrants a video, and it's it is what it is. Um, I, I've been on the, uh, the Livecraft Mine server, um, for about an hour or so, and I noticed that there's a whole lot of things have changed over there, a whole lot of things. Uh, I would like to at some point do a video, but then I feel like if I, after all this time I go do a video, I'm, I'm sort of committing myself to more Minecraft videos. I'm like, eh, I don't really want that. I always kind of resisted making a Minecraft channel because I knew that Minecraft was on its way out because <laughs> it's, 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 you know, it's had a good five year run. Let's put it that way. It's still popular with, with kids and it's still popular with adults too. It's just the adults that got into it early on, you know, you've seen everything that you can see. You've done everything you can done. There's nothing really new and exciting that you could do that no one else has done already. You know what I mean? It's just like, what redstone contraption could I come up with that someone else hasn't already figured out, right? Um, I could sit there and mod it, and I've thought about writing mods for Minecraft um, because it's all in Java, and Java is my language of choice. But, uh, you know, I, I actually downloaded I went so far as to download Forge, uh, and I tried to actually compile it, and it wouldn't compile. So I was like, well, this, this is a piece of crap. <laughs> No offense to Forge people. It's just, I, I, you know, if I can't download and, 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 you know, compile your shit, you're doing something wrong. Uh, especially since I live, breathe, and eat Java every single day of my life. Um, so that is, uh, so I, you know, I end up, I, I just kind of, and what would I, what would I build in it, right? I, I thought about some mods I put in there, but I'm like, eh, these are just variations on other themes, you know, like, I, hey, here's a chest that, you know, follows you around and anything you drop, it eats. Well, it's like somebody else already wrote that, you know, it's like, oh, okay, well, I don't need that. Um, I thought about expanding the, uh, the, the, end chests so that you could have uh sort of like the it's sort of like the color coded end chest except i was i thought of expanding it so that the entire server 
could see the inventory of the chest, so you could throw things in there, and you know everybody could partake in it. I thought about um, having a mod that would, you know, again for a multiplayer server that would allow you to, that would sort of duplicate the ores um, in the game. So what I mean by that is, it would be sort of a collaborative, collaborative mine, right? Where it's like. Um, Every time someone on the server mined out a piece of, say, iron or coal or something, there would be a a server bank, as it were. And you could... So, for every time somebody would mine that ore, a particular ore or a particular block, it depends on, you know, the configuration, um, you could configure it to, say, um, have a 20% chance of putting... A duplicate copy of that ore in the bank or even you know modify those percentages maybe even have a hundred percent chance that it will put a duplicate of that ore in the bank so that in, in other words you know you are collaborating as a server in creating the resources for others to to partake in and what others would do then is go to this bank they'd pay you know emeralds since emeralds don't really have any other use in the game except as decoration right pay emeralds to this bank and get resources out of it and then as more people go and mine resources the bank refills itself all right and i thought that would be a, a really interesting thing because then instead of having you know people sort of competing because the, the big problem with the server right is you're digging a mine Everyone else is digging a mine. You get to an area, you're like, uh, you, you know, especially if you're new on a server and a server's been around for a while, you get to the spawn, you know you can't get any resources out of the mines because others have taken all the resources already. Um, having a mod that would respawn resources doesn't really make a whole lot of sense because then you can't dig underground with any, you know, regularity. Like, hey, I want to build a, uh, you know, I want to build an underground base. Well, <laughs> Every so often, your underground base gets repopulated with all the ores that you <laughs> that you destroy. Well, that's not really... You can't really do that in a mod, necessarily. But I had thought, you know, hey, this way, you know, as people come onto the server, or as you, if you move into an area that others have started to build up, you can then, you know, go to the bank of that area, get some resources, and then also help build that thing up so it would it would add some more collaboration to the server right like hey you know maybe you could set up a bank and say this this bank will only collect these ores right or these wood or this or whatever and then if someone else comes into your city and wants to build uh you know something in your city they could go to the bank and the bank would only give them say blocks or wood that matches the other uh buildings in the city so then they go there maybe they pay emeralds maybe not maybe it's just free and then they go and and they can build whatever they want but it'll still be in the same theme or same style per se as everything else in the in the city so there's cohesion and all that stuff right rather than trying to enforce it through other means um and it's still and at that point it's still survival right because it's still like everyone is still you know, those resources don't appear in the bank until someone has, has done the work to create them, right? Um, so it's not like it's it's not necessarily cheating, right? Because if you have a world border or something that's preventing people from moving out of that area, well, your bank is not going to have resources that are not in that area because nobody can get out of the area to mine those resources, so on and so forth. Like, you're not going to have end, end stone in your bank until someone has found the end, <laughs> right? And has made the portal and all that stuff. So I always thought that that was, that was like my idea for like, hey, this mod would be really great to do in Minecraft. But getting the t A, getting the time to do it, and B, uh, when I downloaded Forge many, many moons ago and I couldn't get it to compile, I just kind of just gave up on it. I was like, well, you're like I, I'll, I'll come back to this at some point. <laughs> <laughs> and by then someone else will have already figured it out and already done something similar and 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 then I don't need to do it. <laughs> um but anyway, I, I long tangent. Uh, that was a long tangent about why I'm still kind of I 
I like Minecraft, but I'm still not... <laughs> I'm not clamoring to go do play some Minecraft right now. I'm playing lots of other things that I'm, I'm enjoying right now. Um, but all that, and all that was due to the fact that uh, we've got Minecon going on this weekend. One of the things that was uh, revealed at Minecon was a trailer. Now we know that Telltale Games has been working on, uh, they announced many months ago that they were going to work on a game called a new game called uh, Minecraft Story Mode. And Telltale Games, if you're not familiar with them, they, uh, they've they made the, the walking, a lot of, uh, I guess, point and click adventures, uh, interactive novel kind of things. Um, so uh, the Walking Dead series, um, the Wolf Among Us, which is one that I, so I'm not really a fan of the Walking Dead, so I've never really wanted to pick up the Walking Dead. Wolf Among Us, I've seen a few videos of it. It's sort of like a fairy tale. It's like a, it's almost like a grim fairy tale almost. Um, it's, uh, uh, I've watched some videos of it. It looks pretty interesting. It would be something that I would, I may or may not pick up at some point in the future, but I'm not clamoring to do it right now. Uh, Game of Thrones, which I've been playing through as a telltale game. Um, Tales from the Borderlands is very funny. Uh, very awesome game that I've been playing through as well. That's also Telltale and several, several others out there that I, I, I'm not even uh, barely even naming their entire catalog. Uh, but they had announced a, a while ago, but n there was no trailer or anything for it. The uh, Minecraft story mode, which is basically the same theme as all their other games, except they're taking Minecraft and they're putting a story on it, an interactive story and sort of, you know, they're they're keeping the same art style-ish type thing using the Telltale engine, which is long in the tooth, but will work just fine for Minecraft anyway. And, uh, you know, adding some of the elements that we know and love from other Telltale, you know, here's your dialogue choices and uh, move around the world and do this and click on things and interact a little bit and so on and so forth. All the things that you would expect in a point and click, well, most, the basic things that you would expect in a point and click game, but wrapped with a, with a story. And it sounds like from watching their trailer, and I'll, I'll link you to the trailer and whatnot and, and articles on it, um, but it looks like from the trailer that they're going to come up with a, there's a fairly compelling story there. I mean, if you're going to call your thing Minecraft story mode, there better be a compelling story there. And it, it looks like they're being pretty faithful and they're, they're, it looks like they might have a good story going. It sounds like they're getting some good voice acting in there. I believe Patton Oswalt was one of the uh, main characters on there. Uh, it looks like they're going to have... It's going to focus around a, a party of adventurers. Uh, I believe that there were four adventurers there. And they all had different, you know, traits. Like there was a, a griefer. <laughs> and there was like a, a, you know, a warrior or barbarian or whatever you want to call them. And... Uh, Several other, you know, sort of, I don't know, tropes or, or whatever you would call them, you know, traditional RPG type things, um, all sort of working together uh, to fight a, a big bad. Uh, and it, you know, from the trailer I saw, I was, you know, I looked at, I was like, you know what, that's not half bad, because I, because when I initially heard the announcement, I was like most people, and I was like, you know. What the hell are they going to do with that? <laughs> this is a sandbox game. What are you going to do with, you know, if you're going to put a story to it, it better be a damn well compelling story. It better be something better than the story that they shoehorned into Minecraft, which is yeah, everything's a dream. And I'm just sorry if I'm spoiling the game for you guys, but everything's a dream, <laughs> which is the, the, the worst cop out you could ever do. It's like a, almost a deus ex machina at that point, right? It's like, oh yeah, you just killed the Ender Dragon, and guess what? The Endermen are, are aliens, and they're invading your dreams, and and the whole world, Minecraft world, was just a big dream, and you're still stuck in it, and, you know, congratulations, and all that Like, what? <laughs> that? Okay. I guess. <laughs> I guess that needed to be there. I don't know. <laughs> I feel like you could just said... Congratulations, you killed the Ender Dragon. Poof, there you go. You're back in your world again. <laughs> it could have just been that, I suppose. Uh, but, anywho, 
that was that was announced. Uh, again, I'll give you links uh, to an article talking about it as well as um, uh, a trailer, embedded trailer on it, so you can take a look at the trailer yourself and uh, come up with your own analysis and, and trying to figure out what exactly is going on in there. But like I said, it looks fairly compelling. I was pretty impressed with it, so we'll see what happens. Um, and as I mentioned, also, there was an article, which I won't link you it to. It's not it's not much to say there, but uh, it was announced that uh, Minecraft, I think, has sold 20 million copies now. Just hit 20 million copies or something sold uh, across platforms. So, holy crap at that. <laughs> That's a hell of a lot uh, for just a little indie game. Um, and in more Mojang news, I'll link you to your gamer uh, article on this. Uh, but Mojang is has announced uh, that they're going to stop development on Scrolls, um, which was their sort of card. Um, uh, what would you call it? Card, card deck building. Uh, it's not even a deck builder. It's more like a just a a battle battle card game. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what the technical term for those for those games are, but it's basically you have cards. They spawn uh, units on the tactical battlefield. I guess a tactical card game. I guess is what it is. And then you've got a bunch of uh, pillants or plinths or whatever they call them on either side of the field, and you got to march your characters across the field, and then you can draw more cards that give them buffs and traps and other things and um i actually have a copy of it i think i got it as part of one of the um one of the humble bundles i think i got it in um but i've never played it it was not really the type of game that i would necessarily enjoy um and from what i understand from you know watching like videos from like total, total biscuit and other things uh it seemed like it was each match that you play in a game was really long, like almost an hour long. I'm like, I don't have that kind of time. <laughs> I mean, I have that kind of time, but not for just one match. Uh, that's the that's the thing that's always put me off to like MOBAs and and other multiplayer stuff is like, well, I mean, there's there's a couple of things that have put me off the multiplayer stuff. One is community. Um, you know, if I if I jump into your game. And I, there's a couple indie games I've been looking at that are multiplayer, and I'm I'm just kind of like, I cringe a little bit, even though I want to try them out. I kind of cringe a little bit because I'm like, I, it's it's I don't know, <laughs> I don't know what kind of community I'm going to run into here, because um, you know if I if I load up an alpha game, and immediately get told that I suck and that I should know better and and you know, spend more time in, in single player in practice mode. And it's like, dude, it's my first time playing. It's still alpha. Uh, so I'm always afraid that I'm going to jump into a, a community that's already begun to get toxic. Um, when I, when I look at multiplayer games, cause really, honestly, I'm always going to be a filthy casual. I will always be a filthy casual. There, there's no, there is no hardcore bone in my body, <laughs> not a single one anywhere. Um, because I love games enough that I want to play many different games because I play many different games. I generally suck at all games because <laughs> I don't spend time practicing. Cause why would I, I just want to, the time I spend practicing, I could just be playing a game and having some fun, you know, it's just, I'm just casual, right? I just don't, I don't want to deal with all that crap. Um, so it's hard for me to get into multiplayer games because I'm always afraid. There's always that thing in the back of my head. Like if somebody comes in here, if a jackass comes in here and starts, you know, harping on me for not being the best there ever was, um, it's going to ruin the whole experience for me. And I'm going to end up not liking the game because of it and really ripping the game a new one because of it, even though it's not the developer's fault. Um, I'll, I'll give you an example. There's a couple multiplayer games that are indie games. That I've been, that I've been looking at, I've been starting to look at, 
Um, one of them is called uh, Shattered Shattered Realms? Question mark? <laughs> Shattered something. Because um, I, I looked at a card game called Star Realms. Uh, that's a really good game because I could play that in single player and not worry about anything. Uh, but this one is like Shattered Realms or something like that. I, I, I don't, I can't think of the name right now. Um, I might end up doing, there's a big practice mode in it. I've been playing the practice mode only. Uh, so I might end up doing a video of the practice mode of that uh, soonish. But uh, it's it's a card game. It's a tactical card game. Um, the AI is fairly competent in it. So that's why I would play probably the practice games. But there's it's it's as with most of those games, it's multiplayer focused, right? And I'm always kind of leery, like, do I want to dig into multiplayer or not yet? Or do I want to just play single player and just pretend that there is no multiplayer in it? Um, uh, so that's that's one I've been looking at. And then there's another one uh, called Of Guards and Thieves. Um, which really looks interesting. It's really compelling. It's, it's a multiplayer game where, uh, one team are guards and you have to walk around. You're, you're trying to protect, uh, I think six different, um, treasures kind of around the, the map and, you are equipped with a flashlight and you have to, it's, it's nighttime and you have to use your flashlight to, to see the other, the enemies, the thieves, right? Um, and again, the goal is to, uh, be able to protect, to, to keep the thieves from stealing the, the items unbeknownst to you, even though there's six different items that in, in the map, unbeknownst to you, there's only one of them. That is the thing that is the goal for the thieves to to uh, to take, uh, but you don't know which one it is as a guard, so you have to equally protect all the things in case in case it's the one that they're actually going for their main objective is. Um, and you're also a tank, so you you've got good weapons, you've got accuracy, you've got power behind you. Um, the thieves, on the other hand, are very squishy, and they don't they have flashlights they can use flashlights so they can kind of throw you off because you, you might think oh that must be a guard over there because i see a flashlight but uh they can use flashlights but they mostly use um night vision goggles so they can see in the dark whereas you can't and they can walk around in the dark and sneak around in the dark uh and you have to be able to as a guard have to be able to shine your light on them and see them um and then their goal is as i said to go steal one of the objectives in the game uh, without getting caught. But of course, they're very squishy. So, you know, if, if they get caught by a guard, they're more than likely going to die very quickly. Um, and it sounds like a very compelling game. It's just, I'm afraid. <laughs> I'm afraid to hit play on it because I don't know if I can, because it, it's, it's only multiplayer as far as I know. I don't think there's any practice mode in it. Um, there might be, I haven't pushed play on it yet. I've been like looking at videos and looking up the wiki and stuff like that. Um, it's just, I'm really afraid cause I know I have this feeling that I'm going, it's so compelling of an idea that it's probably got a good community around it. And I'm, I'm going to jump in there and just get freaking the riot act <laughs> read to me because I don't know how anything works. You know, ah, you're, you're you're making all teams suffer and all this stuff. I mean, that's the thing with MOBAs, right? That's, that's the thing that makes MOBA, in my opinion, makes MOBAs, uh, mostly toxic is that, uh, the bad players, the not bad players, the casual players, uh, can ruin the whole quote unquote, ruin the match for everyone else. Um, and in order to truly, in order to truly have fun in a game like that, you have to be around people who don't care if they lose, <laughs> right? And that is very hard to find. There are so many people, they get in there, oh, I'm not having any fun. This game's not any fun. I can't win. This game's not any fun. I can't win. I'm like, but it's actually a lot of fun if you would just stop trying to win. <laughs> if, if winning was not your criteria for fun, 
you would be having a lot of fun right now. You know, it's just, but trying to find those people is, it's, it's almost impossible, right? I walk into those games knowing full well that I'm probably going to lose a lot and it will be a little bit frustrating because yeah, from time to time it would be nice to win. But even if I sat down for two hours and didn't win a, a match at all, if it's, if it's fun, it, the fun is just being there playing stuff and just having, having a good time, you know, drinking a beer, you know, just, just chilling. Right. And too many people, their fun is tied around, wrapped around winning, you know, they must win or, you know, or else there's no fun to be had. And they'll make sure that if they're not winning, you're not going to have any fun. <laughs> oh, sorry. I hit the mic, mic there. If they're not winning, they're going to make sure that everyone else is not having any fun. <laughs> <laughs> misery loves company uh <laughs> yeah I, I, that's just my my opinion on that although that's that being said i really enjoyed my time in awesome knots which is a moba uh, unfortunately nobody plays it anymore i i've been trying to play multiplayer games in that and i get mostly bots now uh so nobody's in there anymore but it's uh I didn't have any of that in that game. That that game was spectacular in that, like, the community, as far as I could see, was never a dick about anything. Occasionally you would get one, but they were so lame that it didn't matter. Um, and the worst that I ever, the worst experience I ever had in that game was somebody spamming the, uh, the taunts just constantly throughout the game. And... To the point where I just went into the options menu and and turned the mute and turned the sound off. <laughs> I just muted the sound. I was like, screw it. I, I'm going. Uh, this is only going to be a, a temporary <laughs> problem here. Um, but that's you know th that stands out to me is the only game thus far that I haven't had any multiplayer game that's thus far that I haven't had any problems in. I played a little bit of like Halo multiplayer, um, but the th the thing about Halo multiplayer is that People don't usually have any time to type in there. They're usually just, you know, because you're playing on controllers and stuff, so there's not a whole lot of chatting that they can do in there. And all the voice comms and stuff, you can just kind of, you can just mute everybody. So it makes for a fairly enjoyable experience. Although you do jump in there. Let's put it this way: I of the matches that I played, I didn't play too many, but of the matches that I played. I uh, was constantly killed <laughs> within 10 to 15 seconds of spawning. So, you know, if you can, and, and I didn't have really any problem with that. It's just, you, there's only, even me, even I have my limits. <laughs> it's like, spawn, die, spawn, die, spawn, die. It's like, uh, okay, I, I, think, uh, I think I'll put this aside for now. <laughs> Um, you know, the, the spawn camping was real in that game, but eh, you know, it's, at least it wasn't, it wasn't the community itself necessarily. Um, but yeah, I, I digress again, off on a way, way off on a tangent there. <laughs> uh, what was I even talking about? I was talking about, um, you know, Minecraft story mode. And then we talked about, uh, the scrolls. Oh, that's what I was talking about. Scrolls development. Um, so that's kind of a shame they. What they do say is that, uh, you know, this next expansion that they're doing is going to be the last, pretty much the last development they're going to do on it. They might do the occasional bug fix, uh, but all the resources are getting pulled off of that and presumably being put on to Minecraft um, again, because that's the only other thing they have going as far as I know. There is another game that they're publishing, and I forget the name of it. It's like a little robot 2D game. Uh, it begins with a C, I believe, and I can't remember, I can't remember the actual name of it. It's kind of a weird name, but, um, I haven't heard anything about that game. That's still, as far as I know, in alpha or beta, uh, and, and it's not even, as far as I know, not even being actively developed by Mojang employees. It's just being published by Mojang. So, uh, I don't even know what state that's in because now they've been bought by Microsoft. I assume that it's still going to be published by them. But eh, who knows? Um, so other than that, they got, I mean, that's all I can think is that they're going to pull them off and put them on Minecraft or just, you know, fire them. <laughs> who knows? Who knows? I mean, it's, we're talking big corp corporate culture. Microsoft now is like, you know, hey, let's go through that 
acquisition playbook and the acquisition playbook, you know, item number five on that is once you've convinced everybody that they're important and they've got, and they've got, you know, these important sounding titles and all that stuff, then make the work environment as insufferable as possible. So they all leave of attrition. So it doesn't look bad that you fired people, right? (laughs) That's generally how that plays out. This coming from a guy who's worked for many companies that have been acquired. I, I, I see the playbook being played out many times before in the past. And I, I know, I know the general sequence of things. Um, there's always that town hall where like everything's, nothing's going to change. Everything's going to be the same. It's like, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, you know, and then, you know, a month later it's like, oh yeah, no more free lunches. Uh, you know, we're, uh, we're going to put you guys on, uh, on a time clock thingy. Uh, it's not really a time clock, but we're going to make sure that you're, you're here at least two do- two hours extra every day, you know, without any extra pay because, you know, we want you to get worn out and want to leave. Uh, and then, and then we're going to start taking away all your perks like, Oh yeah. All that, you know, match on your 401k. Yeah. We're, we're going to get rid of that. <laughs> I've seen it all. It's just, <laughs> I'm just rallying things off from memory now. Um, anywho, <laughs> this is this is the episode of tangents, my friend. The episode of tangents. Um, that's it. I gotta I gotta stop doing that. Um, I, I've been noticing in a lot of my videos that I have been eyeing and umming too much, uh, way too much, to the point where it's annoying the crap out of me. And that comes from the fact that I am trying not to have long, awkward pauses. <laughs> and it, it, my, my brain does not work very fast as far as, as far as dialogue options go. <laughs> If if you've seen me play through the Telltale games, you know my brain does not work fast as far as dialogue options go. Um, because in my brain, there are seven different things that I want to say and at any given moment. And I can't, I've, I've trained myself over the years to not blurt out the first thing because it's usually the worst thing. (laughs) So I, I take moments, long pauses in my brain to work out the dialogue tree ahead of time to see if I've just painted myself into a weird corner (laughs) Um, or if I'm saying something that's going to be wildly misinterpreted as something far more negative than it actually intended to be. Um, Even that said, it'll be, you know, I'm sure there's plenty of things that I've said that's taken out of context will be uh, pretty, pretty uh, (laughs) not cool. Um, and you know, my only defense is I've never intended to laugh at people only with people. Um, cause I know what it's like to be laughed at. So, uh, that's, that's another thing I need to work on. Cause it, it, it happens just out of, out of just complete habit where I'm trying to fill dead air and there's no words. Oh, damn. I keep hitting my, my mic here. There's no words that I'm waving my hands around too much. <laughs> I just spent four hours at, in an Italian family. So my hands are just going, going nuts right now. <laughs> my hands are speaking and no one can see them. <laughs> oh, I'm so terrible. I am a terrible human being. So, so all that said, I, I'm working on it. I'm trying to improve on that. I've noticed it a lot recently because I am, I have recorded more stuff. I have more stuff rendered, recorded and uploaded than I've ever had (laughs) in the history of the channel. Um, because I've got, uh, there's that um again, because I've, I've got the Witcher running and I have like three hours of that, uh, that I've gone through and I've got, you know, driver San Francisco, I'm trying to get ahead on it. That's, I am struggling in driver San Francisco. There's some really hard ass missions in there. Uh, I've had to repeat several times over. So I don't know how much of that I actually have. 
I record, I record about three hours of it, but I don't know how much of that's actually viable for, for the YouTube consumption. But I've, I've got so much, uh, recorded now, which is terrific. <laughs> I haven't been this far ahead in a long time. And it's given me time to look at a lot of these indie games on the side and try to uh, bring them around the side quest videos and and get some good uh, get some good videos up there. I've, <laughs> there's 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 my words. Uh, th- those are the words that I pulled out of out of my head. <laughs> those are the only words I've got right now. Video, 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 video. video. <laughs> video, 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 video. <laughs> I can't, I can't even say it three times fast. Um, <sighs> stop that. <laughs> anywho, anywho. So get myself back on just, I don't know what I was talking about 20 minutes ago, but we're going to just move on and we're going to talk about some of the things that I still have on my, on my list here. I had mentioned a while ago that they were talking about back in E3. There's still a lot of E3 stuff on my on my list here. And I'll just talk about them as I as I can. But back at E3, I had mentioned that um, Microsoft during their conference had talked about Xbox One backwards compatibility and how people can vote for it, vote for their uh, favorite games that they want to be looked at first for the backwards compatibility stuff. Excuse me. And I've got the list here, and it's 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 a, it's an interesting one. I wanted to just rattle off a few of the things on the list here. As of as of today, as of this morning, the fifth of July, uh, Red Dead Redemption is at the top of the list with sixty five thousand one hundred fifty five votes. Very much agree with that. I have never played Red Dead Redemption, but I've watched actually two playthroughs of it as as let's plays. It looks like a good. It looks like an interesting game. Uh, I, I've never thought it would be something that I want to play, though. The I like the Western theme, and I like the open world, and it looks like it's got a very compelling story. Although I can't remember all the story, I remember bits and pieces of it, because uh, you know a lot of those Let's Plays go on for 50, 60 odd episodes. It might be something that I would circle back around on and and try to play on the Xbox One. I'm not entirely sure, but I I would imagine it would be something that I would enjoy. Um, although it is showing its age and it is a bit long in the tooth, as it were, as far as having been out there for quite some time. And the next one on the list, uh, Call of Duty Black Ops 2. Not big on the Call of Duty stuff, honestly. And the same goes for Battlefield. And even though I played Battlefield Hardline, I played Battlefield Hardline because it was significant. Well, <laughs> the gameplay mechanics were very similar to the other Battlefield games, but the the concept was different enough that I was like, you know, this might be this might be an interesting thing. Um, I believe that. There's a Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 that would probably be something that I would like to play because it's got uh, the sci-fi theme on it. I don't know that I'll ever do that, though, um, because there uh, there are other things out there that have that same theme that I'm sort of looking at. I actually was reminded the other day of a game that has been... uh, It was originally scheduled to come out this year, but I believe that it has been pushed back to 2016. It's called uh, Homefront. Homefront Redemption? Question mark. I don't. Re- I don't remember what the second word in the title was, but I know the first word was Homefront, because there was a game called Homefront many years ago that took place. the The, the premise of it was it is a, you know a first person. Well, is it first person or third person? Uh, I'm going to say first person. I think it was a first person shooter with, well, no, no, I, no, maybe it was third person. Um, yeah, no, I, I think it's third person, very similar to the just cause series from what I could tell. 
I, I never played it and I never actually saw anybody play it either. I never saw any YouTube videos on it. I only saw just trailers and things. But it reminded me a lot of Just Cause 2 where it was alternate history. Um, the, was it the, in the future, a little bit of sci-fi, a little bit, just, just barely a little bit, just more machinery and stuff, advanced machinery. Uh, a, a Korean, the Korean, North Koreans invade the United States and take over and you're a rebel leader and you're trying to push them out of various cities. I think the first one took place in San Francisco, San Francisco Bay area, maybe. And the second one, this home front revolution or whatever it's called, which is push back to 2016 for, from what I can tell, uh, it's supposed to take place in Philadelphia and the suburbs. And I lo- I was actually looking at the trailer and it's, I, I, I noticed some landmarks there, but whether or not that, <laughs> whether or not it's there are the landmarks, I think they are is another story. But I, I, that was back on my radar again, because I remember hearing about it a long time ago and then never hearing any follow up to it. And apparently, you know, there are people who have been keeping up to date with it. And it's, um, it just recently popped back up on my radar. I was like, oh, this is something that I might want to uh, take a look at. And that is typically, I guess that's more of my style, like the third person just cause kind of thing than, um, than the call of duties and black, uh, uh, call of duties and, and battlefields and stuff like that. Though I do make exceptions along the way. So I, Again, tangent, that, that was just my Call of Duty <laughs> tangent. Uh, there, there's, what's the other one? Um, I saw, I saw Toast playing it and he got, he got raided, I think by Andrzej or someone and he got like 500 or so, uh, new followers, but, and congratulations to Toast if he's listening to this, uh, on that, because that's a quite the feat. Uh, what, what is it? Uh, uh global offensive, see, so yeah, uh, Counter-Strike, Counter-Strike Go. I see a lot of people playing that. I can't personally, personally, I can't play those games because I would not be very good and probably never would be very good at them. I actually have a game in my inventory in any, in any game on steam called Verdun and I've won it for a while to get into it. It's, it's like a world war one shooter. I, it's a one or two. It might be one. I think it's one. It's a World War One shooter because uh, there's a lot of trench warfare and stuff in it, and it's multiplayer, uh, multiplayer only actually. It had some interesting like capture mechanics and stuff that I, from what from my understanding, but I haven't. I've always wanted to dig into it. It's my understanding though that it's it's one of those sort of one shot, one kill thing, you know, where it's very. You know, you, you're not you're not a bullet sponge in the game. You you're going to get killed a lot. So I I suspect it's going to be 20 minutes of me going of me respawning <laughs> and nothing more. And I'll be like, okay, I had my fill of that. <laughs> but I've always wanted to look into that as well. Uh, but anywho, back to the list. Uh, number three on the list is Skyrim, uh, which is a uh, an interesting. I uh, I can see where they're going there. Right, Skyrim is already there is an Xbox One version of it, but I can see where people are going. They're like, you know what? I bought the 360 version of it. Now I want the Xbox One. I want the 360 version to work on Xbox One. I, 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 yeah, it's a weird one. It's a weird one in my mind, right? It's like, why put all your votes in that on something that already has an Xbox One version? But I guess I, I can also see the other side of it where it's. Hey, I just got Xbox One as a Christmas present or something or a birthday present, and I had a 360 all this time, and and I picked up Skyrim since all I had at the time was a 360. I picked up Skyrim. And I don't want to buy Skyrim again because I already have it. And I can see the logic in that. I just I wish that I wish that game developers and publishers would get together and say, you are buying a license for the physical product and that license entitles you 
to that product on any platform you want. I wish they would do that. I really do. Because there are indie devs that do that like for Kickstarters and stuff where they're like, hey, um, if you back our game on Kickstarter, we'll give you, you know, the DRM free version. We'll also give you, you know, a Steam key. So if you want it on Steam, you can have that. Uh, a lot of times they were giving out Desora keys, although that's kind of fallen out of, out of the wayside. But, you know, it, it, sort of that open, an open platform approach. I kind of wish that more people would develop, would, would say like, look, a sale is a sale, all right? If you buy our product, you know, regardless of what platform you buy it on, we will honor your purchase on any other platform. So if you, if you happen to go out and buy, you know, if you have a 360 and you happen to go out and buy a, or I'm sorry, if you have an Xbox One and you happen to go out and buy a PS4 and you want to play our game on PS4, knock yourself out, right? Because you've already bought it. You've probably already played some of it. And you really just want to play it on your other system, you know, or you've upgraded your system. Maybe you had a 360 and you upgrade it. You didn't want to upgrade to Xbox One for whatever reason. You just thought, oh, maybe there's more compelling stuff on PS4 that's, that's you know, exclusive, quote unquote. And so you went over there and just, but you still want to play all your other games that are, that have been released, that have PS4 versions that have been released you know, you just want to be able to download them and, and do all that stuff. And I can see, you know, there's a, there's a logistical problem with that, right? Where it's like, well, we need to be able to know that you are an actual paying customer and these systems are very different from one another, the distribution systems. So, you know, there would have to be some kind of key that would let us know that you're cool on all those different areas. Um, I can also see the idea that, oh, well, if we do this, then the people will start sharing their keys with their friends and, who have different systems, and then they'll be able to give those copies out to, to, to which I say, uh, people know about the Pirate Bay, right? I mean, that's, that's, that's going to happen regardless. And, and honestly, it probably wouldn't happen that much if you guys would like release demos <laughs> more often. Um, I, you know, it, it's the same problem on steam, right? It's the thing that the steam refunds have sort of kind of solved right now, right? Where you, because you don't get, because we don't get demos more, more often than not, or at least demos that are reflective of what the final product is going to be. Um, people don't know, hey, is this going to work on my system? How is it going to work on my system? Is it going to work like shit? Is it going to work really well? Or, you know, what kind of gameplay am I getting into? You, you see videos. It, this this just drives me nuts. I go on to Steam a lot, and I see trailers on there that literally tell you nothing about the game. Or they... It's like two opposite ends of the spectrum. They only show you cutscenes that tell you literally nothing about the game or maybe they'll just tell you what the story of the game is but that's that's it they won't show you any actual gameplay footage or they will be these boring slogs of the most boring gameplay footage you could ever see in your life it's like there was no editing done it's just like here is the first five minutes of our game and they don't show you the different modes that you can do they don't show you end game like not end game content but they don't show you the different the 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 crux of the elevator pitch if it were you know it's like hey, here's just like the first five minutes and we recorded it it's eh, whatever you know eh, here here you go here's here's some gameplay footage right not like if i if i were to if i were to hand you uh, let's see how i can put this if i were to say give me an elevator pitch in video form and I'll give you, I'll, I'll be generous and say that the elevator is a very slow elevator and I'll give you a minute and a half to, to make the case for why I should buy your game. That's what your video should be. It should be. And by the way, the ground rule is that you must show gameplay. <laughs> no, no trailers, no CGI bullshit. You must show gameplay. You know, if you, as a dev, 
do that, people are going to more likely be okay with buying your game. <laughs> you know, this is the reason why YouTubers, <sighs> this is, this is the, the gap that YouTubers are filling right now is that this is why you go on YouTube and you see some, you see like three minute videos of people doing their first impressions, right? Because literally their three minute crappy first impression video is better than the videos you can see on from the developers themselves, <laughs> right? They, they actually say more in that than the developers have said in theirs. Uh, and it's kind of sad, honestly, because you're not really doing your doing your hard work any justice by doing that. You, you really need to, you really need to fill that gap a little bit better. Um, and it, it's, I mean, it, it makes it interesting for me as, as a YouTuber, because oftentimes I will be contacted by, well, not oftentimes, but occasionally, <laughs> occasionally I'll be contacted by developers and said, Hey, would you, um, you know, link your video on Steam so that I can link it on Steam and people can see it and it'll be really cool. I'm like, yeah, sure, <laughs> sure, I'll do that. You know, and that's a nice little synergy going on there. We're all synergizing. We're all buzzword bingoing <laughs> in this place. Um, so I, I'm not complaining so much, but I am saying like, hey, you know, even if, if you are not good at that kind of thing, go find someone who is, right? I'm pretty sure if you release a demo of your game, more than likely there will be a YouTuber out there who will pick up that demo and play it, right? And don't limit yourself to the, you know, the YouTubers that have millions of subs. I, I it's compelling. I know. I, the YouTubers with millions of subs, they get keys sent to them left and right and center, right? And there's nothing particularly wrong with that because that's that's fine. Uh, you know, if you're actively doing your marketing by doing that, that is perfectly good because obviously it's the smartest thing to do, right? Because they're they're gonna, you know, I might get a dozen views on a video, they'll get you know six thousand or more <laughs> or sixty thousand views. You know, and who do you want? Do you want 60,000 people viewing it or you want 6,000 or you want six people viewing it, right? It makes perfect sense. And I have no problem with that. Um, but remember something and that sometimes those small fries uh, get to your game probably before the larger fries do because the larger fries that have, are getting pulled in five other different directions by 10 other developers, right? Um, who have them on speed dial. And you know, don't neglect the little guys because the little guys can actually, you know, make your game look really good. Even if it's, well, I shouldn't say that. The little guys can show your game off sometimes just as well as the bigger guys. In fact, sometimes they can do it in a way that is not as annoying <laughs> as some of the bigger guys. <laughs> you won't necessarily see me going around yelling and screaming and dropping F-bombs every five seconds. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> um, and I, and I, tend to, I tend to look more positively at games, even games that are kind of broken. I tend to look really positively at them because I am a, a programmer and I know that there is no such thing as a program that does not have bugs. <laughs> so I'm far more forgiving than most is what I'm saying. Um, anywho, again, tangent. Uh, the fourth one on the list uh, is Call of Duty Modern, Modern Warfare 2. These are all kind of far away. They're, they're kind of close in voting, but still kind of far away. Um, Halo Reach is on there, and I that would be that would be fantastic if we could get Halo Reach on there because I would love to replay Halo Reach uh, on my on my Xbox One because I have that on the 360. I actually. Uh, while we're talking about it, I, I bought the DLC for Halo Master Chief Collection that gives me uh, Halo 3 ODST, and I want to I want to play that in a live stream at some point. Um, I, I actually was going to do it on Friday, and then 
I was in the middle of rendering stuff. And I was like, you know what? Let's just, let's just cancel the live stream on Friday and maybe I'll circle back around on it. I'm actually thinking of, I still have some days off here. I'm actually thinking of maybe doing an off kilter live stream, like maybe Monday. I don't know. I, I have to, I have to, there's still a lot of rendering that I want to do. There's still a lot of recording I want to do. Cause I, this being ahead of the game is actually really satisfying for a change. Cause I can, I'm being able, I'm able to focus now my time on some new stuff and other things that I've been really neglecting. Uh, you've noticed that I I've got, I've got some more, uh, uh, end slates. I've got new end slates coming through. Uh, I still need to work on the channel arts and various other things. So I, I'm kind of enjoying having the time to do that right now. So no guarantees here and there, uh, from this point forward, there are no guarantees from this point forward. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Um, Gears of War three, a fallout three, Mo uh, call of duty four, modern warfare, uh, mass effect three, uh, again, that's another one I'm like, eh, that came out for Xbox One as well, so I don't know if that's kind of a waste or not. Um, Bioshock Infinite, uh, Fallout New Vegas, and a few other things. GTA 4 is on there. It's down pretty low. Uh, Batman, Arkham City, and Halo Wars, which uh, if was, is Halo Wars not part of the Master Chief Collection? It may not be. I think it's. I think it was Halo CE or something was part of that because I just jumped into it for about five minutes to make sure the DLC had been uh, downloaded successfully when I purchased it, uh, and I I just took a real quick peek around uh, at things. Anywho, uh, that was the list so far of things that have been voted up on the backwards compatibility list. So hopefully. You've heard some things on that list that uh, are intrigue, intriguing and, and are hopeful <laughs> for the future. And I'll, I'll, I'll leave you a link to the list so you can take a look at it yourself and, and see if there's anything else on there that I, that I missed that I should have talked about. Um, so there is two more things on my list here that I really want to do. Uh, and then I might end up... <laughs> I might end up not, uh, nodding off after this. <laughs> One of them is called, I just backed this game, full disclosure. I just backed this game on, on Kickstarter. It's a game called Defect. And it's an interesting concept, as, as are most of the things that I end up backing on Kickstarter. It's kind of, it's an interesting concept behind it. It's a sci-fi game, uh, top-down shooter, sci-fi top-down space ship shooter <laughs> where you build it, it, it in many ways it's like um it's like simple rockets the game that i played in in that you start out in a in a creation mode and you create this spaceship with laser beams and everything else on it and once you've created it you can there's all kinds of parts that you can put in there you can zoom it you can you know make the parts bigger smaller uh mix mix and match Put a core in. The core determines what other parts you can put on there. You got power supply issues and all that stuff. So you go through all that creation of a, of a ship. And then you send it off. You go off on a mission with your crew. And you have to complete that mission. And at the at the end of that mission, when you if you succeed, your crew kicks you off your ship and steals your ship. And, and then you have to return. And then you return to the... Uh, to the station to build a new ship. And so then you build a new ship and then you run, you, you get another crew together and it just automatically gives you a crew. You get another crew together as far as I know and you run the next mission and during the next mission, your crew from your previous ship will show up and you have to destroy them in order to complete the mission. And then at the completion of that mission, your current crew will kick you off and you have to build another ship. It's a really cool concept. That, that's the whole idea behind the word defect. In other words, you have to sort of manage the way you build so that perhaps as you build ships, you will build some sort of fatal flaw in them, right? You still need to build them so that you can complete the mission, but at the same time, you don't want them to be so OP that you can't defeat them 
the next time around. So you want to put some sort of defect, some sort of flaw on the ship that you can exploit later on. It's a really cool and neat concept. And I, I hope they get their funny. I, I, I looked at it today. I, I, I backed them just a few hours ago and they were only at, I think 10,000 us dollars. Uh, they're, I think they're looking for 30,000 Australian dollars. And, uh, it's the conversion is roughly that, uh, or 30,000 us, but it's all Australian. You get, you get the idea. Um, I think they're looking for 30 grand. I think they're only at like 10 grand. They've got 17 days left, I think. And I really hope that they get a good push at the end there, because this is the type of game that I think would be fantastic to, uh, to play with. I just, I like that idea. I like that concept. They took, they took a, 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 a game concept that was already out there. You know, the 2d spaceship fighting, you know, top down, uh, you know, shooty, shooty, bang, bang stuff. And they added that, just that little twist, just a little twist and made it very intriguing. And I, I hope that they, I hope they are successful in it. It sounds like from their Kickstarter pitch, they've already got about 35 missions and they got a bunch of parts. They, they've been working on it for two years already and they've gone to Kickstarter just to get some additional funds to finish the game, get more. They want more artwork. They want more missions. Uh, they're trying to do some kind of, they're trying to do a multiplayer aspect of it where um, your ships, you can um, upload your ship. You, know, you build this, whatever ship you want to build. You can upload it, and then you will, in the multiplayer, it's sort of like a, uh, what would you call it? It's kind of like a, mm, it's, it's sort of, um, what would be the best way to describe it? It's like an, e it's like a play by email kind of thing, <laughs> even though it's not. It's more of a, you will play, you can play against AI that is running the ship that, your friends have built or other people in the community have built, right? So it's you upload your ship and then someone else might fight your ship that was uploaded, but that ship was obviously, it's still a single player thing and it's still, you know, it's run by AI as far as I can tell. And so it, it's kind of an interesting little concept there. You can just fight against these random ships that other people in the community have made. And just, I, I'm really, it's one of those things that gets you really excited for, for games and really excited for, for indie devs. And I'm hoping that that's, that that makes it, uh, th that does some things there. I'll, I'll leave you a link to the indie games, uh, website that talks a little bit more about it. Uh, they also have a link on there to the Kickstarter. If you want to throw them a few, a few, uh, pence or quid or dollars or cents or whatever, <laughs> Canadian loonies, whatever, whatever it happens you, you happen to have in, <laughs> in your, in your pocket at the moment. Uh, I, I think it would be, it's one of those, um, investments that I think would be well worth it. And it looks like they already have a bit of it done. I think uh, space game junkie, uh, podcast actually played, uh, whatever alpha version, of it that they had. And I think they interviewed with the, the people. I haven't watched the video yet, but I saw it pop up in my RSS feed. So you, you might even go over to space game, space game junkie, uh, dot com. I think it is. And, uh, you'll see a news article in there with his video and his podcast. And I think, uh, you can at least look at that and see what, and see what, uh, is actually in store for you. Uh, but I wanted to, I wanted to point that out because I, that was, that looks like a really fantastic game. And if you know, on a side note, if you're ever wondering from a transparency standpoint about the things that I have backed on Kickstarter or other things like that, I make a point to whenever I back something on Kickstarter, I make a point to tweet that out. There's a little tweet button when you, uh, when you back something, uh, and it, and Kickstarter will auto generate a tweet for you. So feel free to go through my Twitter timeline and you'll see, you know, all the things that I've backed, uh, in the past. Um, that it does not include things that I've done on Indiegogo. I'm hoping at some point to have a roundup of all that stuff somewhere so that for the sake of transparency, you can see all the things that I've backed and 
also at what level I've backed them at because it doesn't, the tweet doesn't tell you like, Hey, I backed at the $30 level or whatever. It, it doesn't say it. Uh, so, and I often forget even what level I have backed things at because like, for instance, uh, I know that inter interstellaria, something I've backed on, on, on Kickstarter is coming out very soon in July. And I was looking through all my stuff like, Oh wait, did I get a key to the alpha or this? And then I realized, Oh no, wait, I, I bought the low, very low tier. So I don't get it until it's released. I don't, I didn't have access to the beta or alpha for it. Uh, cause I played a demo of it, but I never, you know, I never got anything else besides the demo. And that was a long time ago. And it's, it's the, from my understanding, the game has changed significantly from that demo. So I, uh, d just so you know, I, uh, I realize that I'm not entirely transparent about some of that stuff. So, um, I'm trying to make sure that it's out there, uh, in case you're ever wondering, and, and, you know, bear in mind. Whenever I do a side quest video and all that stuff, I'm not necessarily doing reviews. I'm more like, here's something I found. It's interesting or it's not, right? It's not me. It's not me necessarily endorsing anything. Although I do tend to curate stuff a little bit. Like if I come across a game that is really terrible, I probably won't do a video of it because I don't necessarily want to be negative Nancy on all this stuff, but I, you know, just so you know, uh, I, I do try to be, you know, <laughs> I, I do try to be a little bit picky, but at the same time, I don't necessarily say, no, this is, I'm not going to, you know, I don't necessarily, I'm not reviewing things. Let's put it that way. So I don't see myself as a reviewer. The only time I ever even attempt a review of something is if it's a game that I've played all the way through to the end and the credit sequence is playing and then I'm giving my relatively objective view or subjective view of the game that I played, right? That's really the only time I ever do that. <laughs> and by then, I think it's it's well warranted at that point because I played through the entire game, but never during a, a side quest video. I, I'll, I'll point out things like, hey, this could be better or this could be worse or you know this is there's a bug here a bug there but never as a means to say never as a means to endorse anything so all that stuff just wanted to just wanted you to know about all that the other thing i wanted to cover and i know i'm i know i said early on i was like this is going to be a short episode yeah well it's it's not <laughs> the other thing i wanted to cover before we go today is uh we have news on star citizen so star citizen as you know hugely crowdfunded thing that's reached somehow 85 million dollars in crowdfunding which is crazy by all measures of the word crazy um they are there's several different departments or or devs i should say um that are working on star citizen working on different modules of Star Citizen, and then Star Citizen itself will be the collection, the grand collection of all these modules. And, it, you know, they've released the Arena module, which is more of the sort of multiplayer, um, kind of multiplayer arena where you can just drop in and just sandbox fight things, you know, more like a practice arena type of thing. Uh, we know that there's going to be Squadron 42, which is going to be the single-player campaign experience for Star Citizen where you're flying around in a spaceship, much like Wing Commander. And then we know that there's going to be a module called Star Marine, which is going to be the first person shooter module, which means you can get out of your, and that's not part of Squadron 42, that's part of Star Citizen, which is the overarching parent project of all that stuff. So as far as I know, Squadron 42 is you're always in your ship and that's it. Um, but in star citizen, when you go, which is the multiplayer online, the MMO kind of aspect of it, you will be able to land at a, a station. You'll be able to get off your ship. You'll be able to fight people. You'll be able to go on land based missions, ground missions, space missions, so on and so forth. That's, they've called that the star Marine, um, module. Or as a lot of these websites are saying, the FPS module, which is I mean, 
you know, at least they could do is do some research and find the actual name of the thing. Um, there was a release by the, by Chris Roberts, a letter to the community saying that that was going to be delayed. And this is kind of a big deal because they showed that off at E3 or showed it off at uh, PAX and it looked pretty darn complete from what they were showing off, but apparently it's a hot mess right now and it's being delayed indefinitely. There's no idea as to when uh, or how long other than it's just got to go back to the drawing board apparently, which is a significant setback um, for the community. It's not going to, I mean, there's going to be other things for them to play. Obviously we're going to have squadron 42 at some point and, the arena module will continue to get updates and various other, you know, ships being put into the game and all that stuff. But, uh, this is, you know, for, for that much crowdfunding for, for all that money to see something like that fall behind that significantly. I mean, remember all this stuff was like promised to us two years ago. Uh, and it's two years later and it's like, you know, we're not, well, maybe a year later and not all that stuff is, is not a whole lot to show for, for progress there. Uh, that said, I mean, development is always a hard thing and it's, you can never really pin down how long it's going to take to do things, especially when you're using the cry engine, which is notoriously bad with multiplayer stuff. Like the net code is notoriously really bad in the cry engine. So make it a multiplayer game on that. Probably not the best decision ever made you know there's this thing out there called unreal engine that might have been a lot uh, nicer to work in just saying uh <laughs> you know sometimes you got to make decisions that are actually you know beneficial and not just pick the first thing that comes to mind uh but all that said uh i'm still hopeful for a game at some point i it boggles my mind that they are almost at 85 million in crowdfunding People are buying their, they're releasing ships that are like $400 ships that people are buying in droves. I'm like, I don't, I don't understand it. I really don't. I really don't understand it at this point. So that's all the information I have on that. Hopefully everything will still be on track for all the other modules. It sounds like all the other modules are still on track. So and I've tried downloading Star Citizen. I've got the latest of what I've got, but I have not actually sat down and played more than five minutes of it. It's just, it's still so very early in the development of it. And my system was actually having a little bit of problems running it. So, it, you know, uh, I, I wanted to put that out there. I'll leave you a link to um, an article on it that discusses a little bit more. It's kind of an alarmist article. A lot of articles out there have been sort of alarmist about it. Um, but you know, from, from what I followed, it doesn't seem like it's that big a deal yet. Uh, I'm still cautiously optimistic. Uh, it's, as I've said before, the game, the scope of this game has grown to a point where I don't know how anybody could ever deliver on it. It's, it's promised the world, the universe and everything in between. And, uh, I, I don't, it's also got $85 million, so which is more than a lot of budgets. <laughs> it's, it's almost a Hollywood budget for a movie right there. So I, I guess, I guess, <laughs> I guess everything's going all right from that perspective. So we will see what happens there, but I am truly done right now. I am, I am stick a fork in me. I, I, I've had it. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching everybody. And I will see you next Sunday. <laughs>